We're under the scorching hot weather, but immigration reform can wait. We can't wait. Our, immig our immigrant families need this immigration reform and they need it now. Supporters of immigration reform can't celebrate yet. Good morning, I'm Rolf Winkler. Welcome to the News Hub. The Senate yesterday passed a comprehensive reform bill by a big margin, 68 to 32, with 14 Republicans joining all Senate Democrats and two independents. But the Republican-controlled House isn't close to doing the same. Our guest is Frank Sherry. He's founder and executive director of America's Voice. Frank, good morning. Good morning. So, uh, quickly, what's in the bill? The bill has three main components. It has a massive increase in border security and interior enforcement at the workplace, number one. Number two, it modernizes our legal immigration system so that it's more geared towards employment-based immigration at the high and the low end of the labor market. And then thirdly, it provides a path to citizenship for most of the 11 million undocumented immigrants in America. And that last one, I suppose, is, is that really the crux of the disagreement between the Senate and the Republican-controlled House? Yes, it is. Uh, you know, there, it's, it's quite popular with the American people, but it's, it's more divisive within the conservative movement. And as a result, House Republicans seem a little reluctant to go forward with a broad, comprehensive approach like the Senate did. On the other hand, if they don't go forward, they're going to open up the, the, the door for President Obama to step in with executive action and to be the hero. So. I think they have a real policy challenge and they have a real political challenge in that, as we know, Republicans got spanked by Latino and Asian and immigrant voters last election. And the question is whether they're going to block reform. What is that going to do to the GOP brand going forward? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. So also, let's add to this discussion that the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, recently scored what they, I guess what you'd call it. They scored the legislation and said this is going to be good for economic growth. It's going to reduce the deficit immigration, we add people to the population, you get economic growth. Now, so add that to, to the fact that you also have a lot of support uh, among Republicans in the Senate. And like you just said, it's clear that Latinos have become a very large voting block and can move the needle. Why are House Republicans, uh, why is this not, not a concern for them? Well, look, I mean, you're right about the CBO score. It's tremendous. I mean, first of all, they use dynamic scoring, which all fans of the Wall Street Journal should be happy with. They showed that they would reduce the deficit 197 billion in the first 10 years and 700 billion in the next 10 years. Basically, by unleashing the energy of immigrants here that don't have papers, by bringing in high-skilled immigrants, making sure that farm workers can come in and so forth, that it's going to create a huge economic uh, burst of activity. Now, so what's not to like? I mean, look, I mean, it's good for the economy. It's good for the rule of law. But the problem is, is that the idea of providing a path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants is viewed as a reward for lawbreakers among people on the far right. And for many House members who live in districts where their main concern is a, pri <clears throat> excuse me, a primary challenge, not a general election challenge, they're worried that if they support this, it might hurt their electoral chances. But I have to say, the GOP as a party has, is, gonna come, is facing a real choice. Are they going to modernize and become the reform party? Or are they going to hang on to the status quo and continue to lose ground with the fastest growing groups of new voters? So let, let, let's take this, this key objection, though. If they say, <laughs> if you, you legalize the folks that are here, maybe it's going to encourage additional law breaking. What's your response to that concern? Well, see, here's the thing is that we're going to have this bill has the most uh, significant increase in immigration enforcement in American history. The Senate bill doubles the border patrol, uh, doubles the amount of fencing on the border, something I, I, I find excessive. But if anybody's a border hawk, you got what you wanted. The other key thing that's gotten less attention is that there's going to be an electronic e-verify system, which is going to reduce the magnet of illegal hiring. So you combine strong enforcement with expanded legal channels and you clean the slate of the people here illegally, you've transformed the system into a, from the chaotic dysfunctional system we have now, with illegality as one of its major characteristics, into a modern 21st century system where people can come in a legal and orderly mm. fashion, the people here are legal. That's the idea. Okay, Frank, last question. I want to put you on the spot. Give me a prediction on when you think this gets done. 
or if it gets done. Yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be a pretty ugly process in the House for the next uh, month or three. But I think ultimately the Republican Party is going to decide that getting immigration reform is good for the economy. It's good policy for law and order, and it's good for their political future. I okay. think we'll see something done in October. Okay, Frank Sherry, founder and executive director of America's Voice, thanks for joining us. Thank you.